80,000 Florida jobs are at stake if the citrus industry goes under and citrus greening disease is a very serious threat. Yeah, a couple of scientists tell our I-team they may have found a cure, but they say something is keeping that cure from reaching farmers. I-team investigator Adam Walzer went to find out why. But my granddaddy started our um, fruit, fruit company back in the 50s, so I, I, it, I would be third generation. Sean Paul's Polk County Citrus Grove is more than just a business. It's our family. It's, you know, what we know. It's what we breathe. It's what, you know, it's what we do. Citrus greening disease is now threatening all that. Most of the time, it just looks like the tree, what I call is starving. Before this year's crop is ready to pick, troubling signs are showing. See the difference? So that's the one that you think may be green. That very well could be greening right there. The disease causes oranges not to ripen. Some drop off the tree, and what's usable is small. Citrus production in Florida has dropped by 40% in the last decade. Bad news for 70,000 people who work in the industry, which has a $9 billion annual economic impact. If we don't get a handle on this within five years, the crop's going to be gone. Joe Ahrens and Daryl Thompson were nominated for the Nobel Prize this year for their scientific breakthroughs in finding a cure for Ebola. While doing research deep in the Everglades four years ago, they noticed something unusual about the citrus trees that grew there. They're very big trees, and they have no blemishes on them whatsoever. They're just very healthy, and we've never seen anything on them. Samples of the trees contained fungi called endophytes. That little fungus gets a protected place to live, gets a food source, and in return, the host tree gets protected from diseases. They manufacture compounds that act as almost like antibiotics. And when we went into standard orange groves, um, there was none. Aaron's and Thompson believe endophytes once protected all citrus trees in Florida, but were gradually stripped away by fertilizer and insecticides. They say endophytes can easily be reproduced in a lab, then sprayed or injected into trees. So you could treat hundreds of acres in a matter of days? Yeah, naturally. The scientists contacted Marone Labs in California, where founder Dr. Pam Marone works with endophytes. Aaron's and Thompson then arranged for Marone to send samples to the Lake Alfred-based Florida Citrus Research Development Foundation to see if those strains stopped greening. You put together this group to do the testing? The yes. Thing. CRDF is affiliated with the University of Florida and is funded by taxes on citrus producers and research grants. It brings in about $17 million a year. They're the only place we can test this at, so we didn't have a choice. In this July 2014 email, CRDF Director Tom Turpin thanks Joe Ahrens for making the connection. In this email, Turpin tells Pam Marone, the industry faces great uncertainty right now, so it would be ideal to find something in your product library that can be repurposed to treat this disease. Turpin's project manager in this email estimates the testing time period will be seven months. That was 15 months ago. Thompson and Aaron say they've been shut out of communication. Turpin told the IT Aaron's and Thompson weren't included in the original agreement CRDF has with Marone Labs, so they can't be included in updates. Aaron's and Thompson believe delays in the end of fight testing may also have to do with the money pouring into the foundation to research other potential cures. I don't know if people want a cure. I think they just want to keep working on stuff over and over and over again. Lots of tax money continues to be spent trying to find a cure. In 2014, the USDA approved an additional $31.5 million for citrus greening research. Here in Florida, the state legislature chipped in an additional $3.5 million this past year. Uh, people have vested interest in what they're working on. They do not like ideas brought to them from outside. Pam Marone says the process has been slow, but early findings are promising and follow-ups are underway. In this email to the I-team, she says the research is going as fast as we can go. I have appointed a new point person to make sure we are not slow at following up. If there's a chance that th they're going to get ahead of this, they need to move quickly like they are fighting Ebola. As for whether a fourth generation will work this grove, I don't know if, if it's going to be here or not. Nobody knows at this point. I'm I-team investigator Adam Walser taking action for you.